For the next few days, I'm challenging myself to survive on one of the most dangerous islands in the world with no food, no water, and no shelter. We have struck gold on this island to see if we can survive and make it out alive. And this wild adventure all starts right now. That is one of the worst things I've ever eaten in my life, man. That was one of the most intense night sleeps of my life, guys. Oh my goodness, look where we are right now, baby. We're surviving the next few days, guys, on this tiny little island in the middle of nowhere. This is one of the hardest and most dangerous islands to survive on in the world. And there's a few reasons for that. But let me take you up to this point right here. Let's have a closer look at this island. This is what we're exploring for the next few days, guys. And this is where we're surviving. This is one of the most harsh and desolate terrains on planet Earth right now. There's absolutely little resources on this island. And this is where we are for the next few days, baby. Woohoohoo! Look how beautiful this place is. Are you kidding me? This thing is tiny. Look at the size of this island. I'm standing on one side of it right now, you can see. And look at that, that's the other end of it, man. It is tiny. It's probably 10 meters wide, 10 meters long. And this is where we're gonna be for the next few days, guys. But I'm gonna show you what I got in this backpack. Now there's a few things in here that are really gonna help me to survive on this island for the next few days. So let's take a look what's inside. So first of all, what we got is just the GoPro and batteries. That's not really gonna help us too much. We got this t-shirt here, guys. Now this should hopefully keep me warm and offer me some type of protection throughout the night. And it's just gonna provide some type of security and warmth. That's gonna be really helpful. Next thing that we got, we got this bad boy. This is a mask. All right, we got a mask and we got this bad boy right here. Now this is a hand spear, guys. And what this is gonna allow us to do is just be able to hunt these fringing reefs that are out here and hopefully allow us to get some food later on that we can cook up. So it's gonna be very, very useful. What else do we have? We got a knife right here. This is really gonna help us to hopefully, we find something, clean it up. If we get some fish, it's gonna allow us to fill it, take the guts out and everything like that. So we got this traditional knife. I actually got this in Indonesia at a traditional market. The thing's an absolute weapon. Look at it. The final thing, we got a flint and steel. Now that's gonna allow us to hopefully make some fire later on. And look at that. There's nothing else, man. That is all we have that is gonna help us to survive on this island for the next few days. I'm not gonna to lie to you, I'm actually pretty nervous for this one. It's gonna be a really, really, really hard challenge, but this is what I live for, baby. We're out here, just me and you guys, stuck on this island that's less than 10 meters long, and we're surviving, baby. Alrighty, guys, so there's no vegetation on this island. It's literally 10 meters long. There's no way for me to find food, water, or shelter. So how am my buddy supposed to survive? Well, I'm gonna allow two hours for myself to leave this island, find food number one, find water, and cook up any type of food that I've managed to catch. And then I must return to this island for the rest of the challenge. Alrighty, now that we've established the rules and resources that we have in this backpack, let's take a little bit of an explore around this island. So as you guys can see out there, we got some beautiful reef structure. Now out there guys, there hopefully should be some fish that we can take with this hand spear a little bit later on and hopefully get something that we can eat for dinner tonight. Just provide some vital nutrients. Now guys, if I got stuck on this island for longer than a week, I think I would be in some big trouble. And that's why I believe this is one of the most dangerous islands in the world. The reason for that is, as you can see, there is very little vegetation on this island. There's no access to water, there's no access to shelter, and pretty much there's no way to get food unless you go swimming off this island. So besides that, guys, there's not really any way that you can survive. And to top things off, man, look at the rock that this island is made out of. Some of the sharpest rock on planet Earth. Man, this stuff will just slice you up. And that is why this is one of the most dangerous islands in the world. There's pretty much no way to survive on this island for longer than a few days. And that's pretty much what we're putting to the test. Guys, as you know, I'm from Australia. I do not care about snakes and spiders. They do not really scare me, guys. Unless I got one crawling down my pants, I don't really care. But this island, man, if I had to get stuck on this island for even a week or so, I don't think I would make it, man. It is very, very, very harsh. Really nice fringing reef out here, guys. So hopefully we can swim out and hopefully smack a few fish through this zone here. And let me tell you guys, if you like the episodes where I eat super strange creatures, I think you're gonna like this one because it is gonna be a struggle to get food. And I'm gonna take whatever I can find later on as food. Woo, bit of a drop. Ooh, oh, this is gonna help us massively. 
Now guys, out here on these islands, there's one thing that's gonna really take the energy out of you quick, and that is the sun. As you can see right now, I'm sweating like a gypsy with a mortgage, man. And that is because I've just been straight in the sun. Now we found this little overhanging edge right here, and this is providing some type of shade protection that we should be able to hopefully chill in for the rest of the day. And then later on, we can go out, find some food and some water and survive a little bit longer. This island is crazy, man. There's nothing on here that's helping me, eh? <sighs> Alrighty guys, I've just tucked myself up in the shade right here. This is the only type of real, I guess, protection that I have from that sun. So I'm just gonna chill here for the next few hours probably, let time pass by, and then we'll get off this island. We'll go try to find some food, some water, some resources that we can use to bring back onto this island a little bit later on and hopefully be full and rehydrated. There's some fish down there. I don't know if you can see, there's a long tong down there. I'm also seeing a lot of trevally that are swimming past this uh, rock structure right here. So I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get some fish around these rocks. You can see through there, there's some really nice rocks. And out there, we can also swim out to the reef and hopefully find some food. I feel like a freaking hobbit, man, in like a little cave right now. I'm just tucked up against this bloody little rock wall, trying to get some shade protection out of the sun. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm not gonna lie to you. My spine pretty much feels like an origami right now. It is twisted in that many freaking directions. It's insane. I'm getting thirsty. I'm getting hungry. I'm getting a little bit claustrophobic on this island. I'm not going to lie. It's that bloody small. So uh, I reckon we give it about another hour to half an hour. We jump off this island and we go find some food, some water and some resources that we can use that's going to keep us bloody alive out here. The only type of vegetation that there is on this island and there's bees all over it. Look, there's bees there, bees there. And guess what, mate? Wado's running barefoot again. It's just a matter of time before I stand on one of those bastards. Alrighty, we're leaving this tiny island, guys. We're gonna get food, we're gonna get water, and we're gonna have to find some resources. Then we'll have to return to this island for the night and into tomorrow morning to see if we can actually survive here for the next few days. I don't know how deep it is down there. It looks about two meters. The water is quite clear but I do not recommend jumping off this ledge for any one of you guys, but I got to do it. This is the only way off the island. I'm not going to lie, my heart is beating pretty quick right now. Ready? This one here. Three, two, one. Okay. Woo! Oh my goodness, that was very shallow. That was super shallow, man. You take a good look at the island right now. That's what we've been up on. That's the island we've been surviving on, guys. <laughs> Alright, we've got to hit the shore. There's a bit of current around this island, but it's going to make our way in slowly. What we're going to do is we're just going to start making our way along this coastline and see exactly if there's any type of resources or anything that we can use that's going to allow us to hopefully survive a little bit longer out here. So let's just go for a little bit of a trek, eh? Alrighty guys, I'm just walking this coastline right now and I've just found a big school of mullet in the shore bay. I don't know if you can see them just here. Oh, here we go. Look at them. Can you hear me out here? Here we go. I've only just missed that thing, man. It was such a good throw. I can't believe it. That would have been food right there straight away. First things that we can use, coconut. And that one is empty. You can hear nothing inside of that. There's all these bottles that have washed up on these beaches right here. That one's not very useful. So we can't really use that. There's just so much rubbish. We'll try to pick up as much as we can when we leave this island a little bit later on. There is so many coconut trees. So what I'm thinking is hopefully if we can find a few of them, we should be able to open a few of them with our bare hands and then we can have some of the juice inside of that and that's going to allow us to stay hydrated and there's so many resources on the beach you can see right here look at this this is like a little plastic bottle and stuff like that it's quite sad to see there's a lot of rubbish that washes up in these indonesian waters we're not going to use that we'll take it we'll put it in the backpack and that will actually we'll take this off the beach but what we're looking for is some coconuts here's some up here see if we got anything good Look at this. You can see guys, these ones here, they're not the ones we're looking for. They're quite rotten. There's nothing inside of them. We need to find those fresh green ones. There's got to be some around here. Oh, up here. Look at this. Woo. 
This is what we want, man. This right here. That is what we're looking for. We have struck gold on this island. A beautiful green coconut that's obviously come of one of these trees through here. And this thing is gonna be filled, you can see. It's actually way heavier than those uh, brown ones. It's just gonna be filled with liquid. We just need to find some type of rock or something like that that we can use to crack this open. Oh, there's actually another one up here too. You're kidding. Yes. Oh my goodness. All right, so we got another one here. This one's quite a bit smaller, you can see. It's not as big as that last one, but we're gonna take these two coconuts. We're gonna walk back down to the beach. There should be some rock structure that we can bang these against. And I'm gonna show you how we can open up this coconut. Bare hands, baby. Whew. These are gonna bloody be a lifesaver out here. I'm very happy about these bad boys. My mouth is so dry right now. Feels like the bloody Sahara Desert. All right, let's keep making our way back towards this island. I know there's some rocks down there that we can use that are hopefully gonna allow us to open up these coconuts on this pristine coastline. I just look out there and I start smiling. It's incredible here. Woo -hoo -hoo. We've just touched down right here, guys. You can see the little island is right behind me out there. The reason why I've touched down here is because of this bad boy right here. This is a sharp edge rock that's gonna allow us to open this coconut right here. So pretty much guys, what you're gonna do, you're gonna grab the sharp end of this coconut. You're gonna see the sharp end of this rock and you're gonna start smacking it just like this. And what you're doing is you're trying to open up all those fibers on this coconut. You can see all these fibers through here on this coconut. You're trying to split them. And slowly from there, you can start peeling it back. It's gonna take me a little while, guys. If I had a machete, I could do it in two seconds, but I don't have any type of machete. And that knife's not gonna cut it, the one that we got, so. This is the only way we're gonna be able to do it. it kinda gets easier the more you do it, so just keep going with it. Starting to make some good headway. All right, you can see right there, guys, I pretty much got that top layer off with my bare hands. Now I'm just starting to make my way deeper towards the nut. That doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> deeper towards the nut, are you kidding me? <laughs> Woo! Look at that chunk. You can see right there, guys, we have made it to the nut and this thing right here is full of liquid. I'm gonna go give it a quick wash and also wash all this sand off myself and then we'll crack this bad boy open and drink it, eh? When we wash this bad boy off, let's crack her open, eh? There we go. You can see that liquid start to come out. Oh my goodness. So refreshing. It's so like sweet, these juvenile coconuts. It's almost like fizzy. I'm not gonna lie. These juvenile ones, when they're this young, they're almost like super fizzy. It's so good. It probably took me about 15 minutes to open this one. So we'll open that next one next. And this will be quite a bit of liquid, at least to keep me going for the rest of the day. Does it get any better than this? We're sitting on a pristine beach, drinking coconuts. Woo! This is what we bloody live for, baby. Shoo-hoo! Woo! Look at that, baby. Beautiful white coconut. All of this right here, this is just a little snack for us before we go spearfishing. Look at that. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. The meat is not as sweet as those older ones, but you get way better juice. This is still pretty good. Alrighty guys, I'm actually feeling really fueled after this coconut, man. Look at it, I've smashed a whole bunch down. All that liquid, I'm feeling bloody re-energized. So what I'm doing, I'm gearing up right now. I'm swimming out to this beautiful crystal clear ocean behind me. We got the hand spear right here. Let's see if we can go get some fish or something that we can have for dinner a little bit later on this afternoon. So let's jump out there. Let's go. Woo.
Oh my goodness, guys. That was a bloody hard hunt out there, that's for sure. You guys see the end of my spear? Look how mangled that thing is, man. I hit that many rocks, but look what we ended up with. This bloody, bloody giant sea cucumber. Ugh. I can't believe I'm about to eat this thing. Oh, what the hell, man? It's like bleeding. What the hell? It's like excruding all this red stuff right now. We also got these two fish, guys. This is like a little baby unicorn fish you can see right there. They're actually really good eating. The locals love them. And this thing right here, this is a little surgeon fish. It was so hard out there with the hand spear. As you guys saw, there was some nice fish in the distance, but I couldn't get close to them. It was near impossible. This bloody surgeon fish though, just lit up my finger like a Christmas tree. Look how swollen that is. That finger compared to that one, it is that swollen, man. It is killing. What I'm thinking is I want to get a fire going and I want to get these fish straight on the coals. It's going to be sick on the beach here. But first, I need to clean up this thing. That looks like a big fat, you know what it looks like. That water out there was just incredible, man. I was just like swimming through it and it was crystal clear. We found that little baby lobster. He was so cute. I was kind of just like playing with his antennas and stuff. I was hoping that I was going to see something bigger and better to shoot with this spear, but I just couldn't. We ended up getting that nice like parrot fish. I took that shot and we hit that nice, it was like a ras or a parrot fish. I don't know what it was. It was something that looked really tasty, but that bloody moray eel stole it off us, man. I've never had that happen to me before. That fish, he like escaped off my spear. He went underneath that ledge. That moray eel went around and just started smacking him up. And to be honest, guys, it's the moray eel's home. Yes, I love the ocean also, but it didn't feel fair taking that fish back off the moray eel. He, I guess, kind of half hunted it. I just helped him with the hunt, I guess. So I just let him have that fish. And uh, yeah, he gets to enjoy a really nice, tasty fish while we enjoy this thing right here. First things first. I'm not even gonna try to pretend like I know what I'm doing right here. I'm just gonna chop the ends of each of it off. I'm gonna split it down the middle, and I think I'm gonna take the guts out. I got this sick old traditional knife, man, from the market. I was thinking, you know, I'd be cleaning up some like, you know, big mackerel or something. Not this big old sea cucumber. Oh my goodness, guys, look what just came out of this thing. Are you kidding me, bro? It's like a pile of guts, and I'm about to eat this thing. Are you freaking kidding me? That's disgusting. Look at that, bro. Are you seeing that right now? And look what happens when I squeeze it. It's like got this red stuff that's coming out of it. I can't believe I'm about to eat this. The reason I'm eating this, guys, is because I know it's a delicacy in some countries. And you know, I always found these things and I've said to myself one day on a survival challenge, I'm actually gonna try it and see if the delicacy lives up to the height. So that's what we're doing today. We're seeing if it's an actual delicacy or if it's one of those fake delicacies that it's called a delicacy because no one else wants to eat it. A lot of you guys comment on the vids like, this bloke will just about eat anything. Well, today, guys, I think this is going to test out my immunity. If I don't get food poisoning from this, then let's just say I'm not going to get food poisoning from anything. That's, that's probably the best we're going to get. I've kind of taken most of the guts out. As I say that, there's guts hanging out. I'm taking most of the guts out. I'm not going to lie, guys. This thing has a smell to it that is not okay. But I guess if you were like a blind man and you uh, shut your eyes, it kind of looked like a chocolate bar. Look at that, it stained my finger. The outside of it has stained my finger. And I'm gonna put it in my mouth, bro. I'm gonna have a black mouth for like five days. I kind of made like this little designated area for a fire just in the shade. And look at this spot right now, it is beautiful. Let's get the fire cranking right here. It's gonna get a lot of this kindling and just fill it in right here. Just want it to be super light and airy. So I'm just using this husk to this coconut right now. You can see, look at this. This is perfect, man. Shredding it all up, and this should hopefully take a spark. We got our flint and we got our steel right here. I'm just gonna try to spark this thing up. Should go up pretty easy, I reckon. It's uh, super light and airy. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. We've got this fire that's absolutely cooking right now. And what I'm doing is I'm just fueling it because I wanna create like a really nice coal base. And then from there, I should be able to just put the fish straight on. All right. I've just fed this piece of sea cucumber onto this stick. I'm gonna put it right here. And we're gonna just let it sit straight over the fire. I'm gonna make sure that thing is well and truly cooked through because I'm pretty sure that that thing is gonna test out my immunity. 
could be potential food poisoning. All right, we've washed them off. That looks pretty good. You can see right here, we've got a really nice coal base going on this fire. So I'm just gonna put these fish straight on. You can see this is starting to get a really nice cook along the outside of it right here. So uh, we'll just let them sit on that coal base. It is smoking up a little bit, I think, because this coconut is a little bit wet. But uh, fingers crossed we can get a good cook on this thing, man. That is the most important. See that sun is going lower right now and that tide is starting to flow out. And that is because we've been on the mainland for probably about two hours now, maybe a little bit over, but we're still waiting for this fish to cook. It's taking a little bit longer. Once this cooks, we'll return back to that tiny little island and we'll get ready for the night ahead. I think lunch slash dinner is just about ready. But this bad boy, I'm gonna try to scoop him onto this. Oh yeah, that's ready too. Can't forget this bad boy. Ah. Alrighty, we're good. Moment of truth has come. We got our fish right here. You can see we got this little surgeon fish. Doesn't look too great. And we also got this bad boy, which is like a little unicorn fish. And don't forget, good old sea cucumber, which we're gonna give a shot. All right, first things first, let's go the surgeon fish. I haven't had one over here in Indonesia, but I've had them in Australia. Let's see if they can co compare. Look at the meat on it. It's actually really nice meat. Look at that. Whew. Oh. Alrighty, that surgeon fish is pretty good. You can see it's got beautiful white meat that's just falling off the bone. Surgeon fish is so underrated, man. So, so, so underrated. I'm gonna give the surgeon fish, for no seasoning, no sauce, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. It's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Let's try this thing. I've never eaten one of these before. These are what they call a unicorn fish. The locals bloody love them over here, so let's give this a shot. Look at that, white meat. It's pretty good. Woo. It's got quite like a smell to it, like a, a weird smell. But the meat itself is quite nice. All right, so the surgeon fish is winning with the eight out of 10. We got the unicorn, not as good. Still all right though. And then we got to try this thing, man. Look at this. All right, look at this thing, guys. We're gonna give it a shot. Sea cucumber. Let's see if this thing is an actual delicacy. Let's give it a try. It's freaking tougher than my spear gun rubber. That is disgusting. That is one of the worst things I've ever eaten in my life, man. Whatever country has that as a delicacy, they can freaking keep it. What the hell? All right, I'm sticking to the fish 100%. That sea cucumber, man, I'm never eating one of those ever again. Alrighty, you guys can see I've smashed this down right now, guys. There's no meat left on this bone, but I reckon we pack our stuff up. Okay, guys, we're going back to the island. We've had our fun on the mainland. We've got food. We've had some coconuts, and uh, we found some pretty cool things, but it's time we go back to the island for the night. I brought myself one coconut. That should hopefully be quite enough uh, to get me through the night. We also got, I guess, the T-shirt in this bag. That's going to help us once we get to this island, but... You can see right now the tide has drained out heaps. Buddy, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I cannot get the taste of that sea cucumber out of my mouth. It's like this sour, bitter, like taste that's like stuck in my mouth, man. It's so, so, so bad. But uh, I'm gonna crack open this coconut and hopefully that will wash it down. Alrighty, we are back on the island right now, guys. Back to the bloody good old island. I'd be lying to you guys if I said I was thrilled to be back on this island. I just had the worst thing happen to me, guys. I just put the coconut on the other side and that wind's picked up a little bit and I'm just looking out. Look at that. That's my freaking coconut down there, man. That means we pretty much got no liquid for the whole night ahead. I'm gonna be getting out of here first thing in the morning, that's for sure, because I got that taste of sea cucumber in my mouth, man, and it is so, 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 so rank. My sweet coconut is floating out to sea. All right, I got the t-shirt on, guys. This is hopefully gonna give me a little bit of warmth throughout the night. And uh, we're pretty much sleeping on freaking rocks tonight. I'm gonna try to find some type of, I guess, vegetation that I can fluff up and at least create some type of comfort. I don't think we're gonna be getting much sleep tonight, but uh, a lot of star watching and a lot of just cruising through the night. This is literally torture right now, guys. I'm just sitting here. I got the taste of that sea cucumber in my mouth. 
and my freaking coconut is just drifting out to sea. Stupid wind rolled it off the island. That sun is slowly starting to set over the horizon right now, guys. And I'm getting myself ready for the night ahead. There's pretty much no form of cushioning out here. I'm pretty much on straight rock, but uh, I'm using these leaves and all this uh, grass to kind of try and make as much cushioning as possible. I'm actually gonna like try get as much of this as possible. And what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna just push it right behind my head. So you can see just like that. And it provides at least some type of cushioning on this hard rock. And this is us for the night. You guys better stick with me. You're the only thing that's keeping me going. That sun is setting. Shoo absolute wild day today was man sick diving fresh coconuts beautiful white sandy beaches crystal clear water and now this sunset to top it off this is what i live for man so good i love you all Alrighty, guys i'm guessing it's probably like 12 one o'clock at night right now it's pretty windy at the moment but uh i'm not really getting much sleep i got too much adrenaline going but uh i'm just praying for the sun to come up I'll see you guys very soon. We're getting out of here first light. Oh my goodness. Good morning, guys. Oh, that sun is just peeking over the horizon. You can see right there. That was one of the most intense night sleeps of my life, guys. This is what we're sleeping on. Freaking rocks, man. But we have done it. I'm packing everything up, guys. We've managed to survive with no food, no water, and no shelter on this tiny little island right here. Please show your support. Like and subscribe. You guys are the only thing that's keeping me going. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Much love. Shoo!